Today, I'm going to talk about and rebuild a lithium jump starter pack. Tell you a little bit about them. You'll see how they work inside. See why I like them, why I don't like them, how they compare to like a lead acid jump starter. Been using this one for about three, four years. It's worn out. Let's rebuild it. So to open this one up, there's just four screws. They're all going to be about the same. Then pry, 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 pops right open. Inside, there's nothing really spectacular. You have four lithium polymer pouches. I've already cut this open, so let's pull those out. I've actually even taken out the uh, four screws for the circuit board. So the whole circuit board will just pop out. Your circuit board pretty much is just a, um, a BMS, a battery management system that just um, makes sure all these cells charge the exact same amount because they're hooked back to back. Each one is a nominal of uh, 3.7 volts. So 14.8 volts is, you know, nominal average is what you get out of here. Peak of like 16 something and as low as 12 volts is what you actually get out of your two leads that hook to your little, your little jumper. But then you got your battery management leads right here that just go in here and make sure each cell charges correctly. Uh, this particular one, you know, you have a charging circuit. But this one has a little cigarette outlet. So you can have a little, put six amps of cigarette lighter out there and some USBs and stuff to charge your cell phone and stuff like that. It all worked good, but I mainly use this just for jump starting stuff. And I will say they work amazing. Anyway, about a year ago, the pouches actually suffered swelling. Some of them did. Um, this one did. And that's a common problem with lipo. Um, this one did as well. You can actually see I actually punctured with a needle the pouch. Just the outside pouch, it was I punctured on a side where it wasn't touching the lithium plates and I actually put a piece of foil tape over it. Um, these like to gas and that causes them to swell. And once they start doing that, they're a goner. But I still got another about a year out of them and it was busting the pack apart, the, the plastic case. But they're dead now. They won't hold a good charge. So we're gonna replace them. So for a replacement, you can get them pretty cheap. I think I found a set of batteries with about equal capacity for about 25 bucks. I think I spent a little bit more on a name brand that actually seemed kind of like a name brand from, from the reviews on Amazon. I paid about 30 bucks for this pair. So I'm gonna rebuild it for 30 bucks. And yes, I have a pair here because this is a 3000 milliamp battery pack with 35C rating, meaning that it can put out 105 amps continuous um, discharge. So to find a battery pack this exact same size was impossible. I looked and looked and looked, even from the manufacturer, I found the manufacturer information on it. Look it up. It's something they only sell to big corporations, you know, to make these things. They don't, nobody sells it direct. So these right here are for radio control stuff, like helicopters and you know, airplanes, stuff like that. Has a nice protective pouch on it. It's meant to be plugged in, so you got your battery management system here plugged in to charge and discharge through here. And I could actually, I'm just gonna solder everything in, but you can actually buy like all the uh, the connectors for these and I could adapt this whole thing with the connectors. So I could just plug these in and then in four years from now, I'll just get another set and plug them in. But that's future me problem, so for now, I'm just going to solder them because I think the connection with the solder, um, it actually transfers electricity way better than a um, just a touch connection. And so we have to um, take off some connections. This just unplugs. Unfortunately, it's a completely different plug as these. These are completely different. But we're going to actually cut this off of these battery packs, cut these main leads off, solder these together, solder these together, solder all these together, and just work at it. Now... This is two different packs. Each one is 1500 milliamps. I'm gonna wire them in parallel. So red and red are gonna touch. Black or black are gonna touch. So these have four. This has four. This is 14.8 volts. This is 14.8 volts. When you wire red to red, black to black, you get 14.8 volts out. Um, that's the way we're gonna do it. It's gonna be a 4S, 2P. So four in series, two in parallel. I'll just really quickly explain, because I get to ask this question in other battery videos, what does four in series parallel mean? So this is just like a battery, almost, you know, this is a lithium, but you know, compared to like a double A battery, you got a positive and a negative. So if you put the positive to the negative, 
positive to the negative, positive to negative, like in all your toys and all the devices growing up, and you take the power off the end of that, it's gonna be 14.8 volts, okay? Each one of these batteries actually puts out 2,500 milliamps. Now if I took another set, and positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and wired these together, so the ends right here, I would still get 14.8 volts out of the ends of these, but now I would have double the capacity, so instead of 2,500 milliamps out, I would have 5,000 milliamps out. So this would be a 4S, 2P. If I did another set, you know, another row, it would be 4S, 3P. This battery pack right here is a 4S. These combined as I'm in, as these as a single is a 4S, combined they are a 4S, 2P. I'm going to desolder these connections um, and desolder these BMS connections carefully without touching stuff. No metal wedding rings or anything else, no metal watches. It looks like they carried uh, two black and two red to the same terminals just to carry the amperage of the little cigarette lighter plug or charging through these little teeny wires. So we'll do the same. So now I just need to start soldering these up to um, these. We'll just get soldered to this. So red to red, black to black, just to that. And then the BMS, the battery management, so we'll just connect um, same color to same color. So between the batteries and then to this so I can plug it into the board and we're done. And then we have to modify the case to fit. So, so the colors were a little bit different between the BMS on there and the BMS colors of there, but they're just left to right. So where positive was and over to negative. So same thing. Um, I'll show you how I do one. I'm just taking them out of the old connector. But you can buy all these connectors. They're not expensive. Um, I would have had to spend another $15 probably, $10, $10 to actually um, wire up connectors. But don't worry about that. Stripping this in a wire, I like to use a pocket knife because I can just go in with a really sharp pocket knife or razor knife. And I just roll the wire until I hit the wire. If you try to use strippers, you almost always like, you almost always cut the wire and you got to keep going. So I just put it in, just lightly roll it. These two connect together. You also want to do this with two battery packs that are pretty close to the same capacity because now these are equalizing themselves. So if this one's way more charged than this one, it'll charge it and you don't want it to really charge itself through these wires, if that makes sense. Um, just using some electrical solder with some flux. This is not, you could use flux core solder. I like using external flux, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put a big old gob on these two. This one has been soldered before. I got my heat shrink already on there. Hold it, wait, 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 wait. Just sets up, slide the heat shrink down. Take your lighter. That's it, just one more to go, and the BMS is all wired up together, and then it's just the big wires. So that got a ton of solder on it, all nice and good. I usually like to, after I do connections, just make sure there's no sharp pieces that are gonna punch through your heat shrink. I'll slide my heat shrink down over. Maybe. There we go. You shrink that on. And then I will probably, I will cover these in electrical tape as well, just because I want extra, extra insulation between this positive and this negative. Like the last thing I ever want this these to do is to rub together and wear a hole through heat or something. Um, so I will separate these um, 
to some degree and put out electrical tape just between them because I never want those to touch. But that is completely soldered all together. So why I didn't go with just one is because one 3000 milliamp was actually way more expensive than two 1500. That's why, and they were longer and bigger and they wouldn't fit in this scenario in this pack. But also, if one pack goes bad, if I lose, like in this one, you know, if I just lost one cell, the whole thing's bad. If I just lose one pack in here, this will still be usable. So maybe I can get five, six, seven, eight years out of it, possibly, you know, without having just a uh, happenstance, something go bad. Now these don't fit perfectly. I couldn't find anything that fit perfectly. So what I'm going to have to do is they're a little too thick. They are the right di diameter, but they just a little too thick. So I'm going to just cut out a hole, stick them through the back. Just cut out three sides real fast. And I'm using the uh, soldering iron just to heat it up to bend it how I want. Not perfect. We're getting there though. So I just cut there, there, top three, melted it, folded it back over, took a couple little scrap pieces of plastic and just kind of welded the tabs just so it can sit on everything. I took the heat sensor. I did have to extend the wires because I wanted to put it between the two battery packs and I just jammed it right between them. Um, but everything else lays in there nicely. I can just snap this all back together. Let's test it out. I hooked a battery on there with absolutely zero volts. It's just battery out of the junk pile. Nothing in there at all. Let's... It is nice and cold right now. It's probably just barely above freezing outside. So this charged up good. Everything's working just fine, just like it should. Um, I'm going to leave it open a little bit on the back because I want those batteries to cool down. Yes, it's not a consumer product anymore because I've modified it and you could never sell it with the batteries open like that. But for me, it's just fine. I've got the batteries protected so they won't get punctured, but I want them to cool down. Just my personal preference. Do what you want if you're gonna do this. I'll put a link below to this or the updated version of it. It was under hundred bucks, absolutely worth it absolutely love it so i got three and a half years out of it something like that worth it these i get anywhere from two to um maybe four years after two years the the lead acid battery inside there really starts struggling and you only get you know you're not going to start a v8 engine you're going to start like a little four cylinder car and um, and that's about it you gotta spend the you know, 35, 40 bucks to actually replace this. Just like I spent the uh, 30 bucks to replace the batteries in here. I'll put a link to those if you guys care to see that. Um, what do I, which, do, which one would I choose? Uh, it really depends. For starting, absolutely, these, this cannot touch what this will do. This will give you six, seven, eight, nine, ten cranks. Like start, like five, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten second cranks on a V8 engine. Out of this little thing this thing you're lucky even with a brand new battery if you get two really good cranks at that thing and then on the third crank it gets weaker maybe you get a little bit of a fourth and, and you're done so this can't touch it but this does something this won't and that is this can run other devices like i can take a um a lawn and garden tractor or something or even a you know that doesn't even have a battery in it and just go out and hook these to the battery cables you know because it's just one of these batteries inside here and i can just run it off of this power bank 
I could run a starter motor off of this. I could run power window motor to test it. Uh, I could run my winch for a minute off of this thing. These things are amazing. This is more like a, uh, I see this now as like a, a spare battery. And this is a jump starter. Completely different. Can't live without either one. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Have a good one. Bye.